first a question of trust or a question of conscience. After a marathon three-year legal process, U.S. soldier Bradley Manning was finally sentenced this week to 35 years in jail for distributing hundreds of thousands of secret documents. Private Manning, who immediately requested a sex change operation and to be known as Chelsea, has become the center of a freedom of information campaign. Manning's case follows other high-profile leakers making headlines, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange and former CIA man Edward Snowden. They all say their actions were for the public good, but authorities on both sides of the Atlantic view them as serious breaches of security. Today on Sunday Morning Live, we examine the ethical dilemma at the heart of these stories. Defenders said Private Manning's actions were those of a patriot motivated by a sense of duty. Manning leaked more than 700,000 classified documents and a video of an American helicopter gunship attack in Iraq which killed 12 people, including two journalists. Five to six individuals with AK 47 Request permission to engage. Supporters argue that Manning should never have been brought to trial and that it sets a dangerous precedent. Manning's defence lawyer, David Coombs, says the case raises fundamental issues about free speech. We need to decide what freedoms and individual rights we are willing to give up in the name of national security. But the US government said Manning put military and civilian lives at risk and had to face the consequences. Prosecutors had asked for a 60-year sentence to send a strong message to any future potential leakers. WikiLeaks published thousands of the documents Manning leaked. The anti-secrecy website's founder, Julian Assange, sought refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. He is trying to avoid extradition to Sweden, where he's accused of sexually assaulting two women, a charge he says is false and politically motivated. Assange also fears eventual prosecution in America. The United States must renounce it's witch hunt against WikiLeaks. Another fugitive, Edward Snowden, who worked for the CIA and the US National Security Agency, has recently been granted asylum in Russia. He leaked information about the extent of internet and phone surveillance conducted by the NSA and Britain's own spy center, GCHQ. So how should we view these modern day whistleblowers? Are they really moral crusaders with our best interests at heart, disclosing secrets for the greater good? Or a dangerous threat to security forces which depend on surveillance and the secrecy of their operations to keep us all safe? Well, as a question, Tarek Ali, are they moral crusaders or are they recklessly endangering security? Well, I think they're very courageous indiv individuals, whatever you think of them or what they've done, because they've essentially put their lives and their careers on the line to tell the public the truth, a truth which it is not getting from mainstream media sources, and that is why I have an enormous respect for them okay. and think they're very, very... They're people who should be supported. Well, that's the question for today's text poll. Do whistleblowers risk our security? Text the word vote followed by yes or no to 81771. Texts will be charged at your standard message rate. You can only vote once. Go online to vote for free and results will be announced at the end of the show. And visit bbc.co.uk slash Sunday Morning Live where you can also read full terms and conditions. Um, John Gaunt, do you think we should regard whistleblowers as heroes on security? When, when you talk about whistleblowers, let's just keep it focused on whistleblowers in these particular Specifically instances. Specifically on security. No, these three are villains. There's no two ways about it. Manning's a traitor to his uh, nation. When he, when he joined the army, he would have signed... Uh, to keep these secrets just like our military do as well. If we begin to applaud these people and uh, raise them up as almost demigods like Tarek and his ilk will do, we're actually undermining our own security and it will just set a precedent. It will get worse and worse. And, you know, interesting, isn't it, that uh, one of them's gone to Russia. Well, that's a bastion of free speech, isn't it, and freedom of the press. The other one's holed up in an embassy and is afraid to go back and face very serious allegations of sexual misconduct. What's his problem? It's easier to extradite him from this country than it is 
from uh, Sweden. So he's talking absolute uh, nonsense. So the bottom line is, as far as I'm concerned, they are villains. Now, that's not to say they haven't brought out some things which are very, oh. very interesting. And that's why it's not just a black and white issue. All right, what about you, Christina? What's your well, I find myself in the unfamiliar position of saying I agree with John Gaunt, <laughs> largely, largely, <laughs> which is that, um, I mean, I think, I think you can't answer this question in a, in a straightforward no. yes and no way. Um, are they all villains? Yeah, we, we don't know. I, I think that some of what, what Bradley, now Chelsea Manning, brought out, particularly in relation to the video that exposed horrific murder, and the, and the video was released under the heading Collateral Murder, and it was Collateral Murder. Which was murder. the gunship footage. The, the gunship footage which appeared, which was leaked by, which appeared on WikiLeaks. I think that is awful and people should know about it. But I do think that the short answer to are these people putting other people's lives at risk is yes. I just want Tarek to respond because, you know, there are people who think this is different to exposing a specific wrongdoing. Mm. Thousands of documents which they hadn't read just released. And in the case of WikiLeaks, published but, sometimes without names redacted, which jeopardised safety. But often, if you look at these documents, and I can't say I've read all of them, but I've read a lot of the WikiLeaks stuff which is available, most of them are effectively diplomatic cables mm. from U.S. embassies to the State Department saying things which we all suspected but didn't know. But it is not the case no, that they threatened they're, they're lives. Based, they're, that is all, to me, that, I mean, and, and I, I agree that some, some of what has been revealed is probably us, worth us knowing. But it, essentially this is based on the premise that information wants to be free, that everything should be transparent. You cannot operate in the world on that no. basis. And certainly but diplomacy why, why can't. Why can't you operate? You the world on that because, basis. Because it's because the media has no, changed very considerably. No, it's considerably. not. It's because it yes. is absolutely unworkable for in, in very complex relation, areas like diplomatic relations no. to have every single but thing released. Also as well. This I country also, is full of journalists uh, who self-censor themselves. No, that's who, true. Who, yeah, who don't publish stuff which they know exists. That's true. So when, when, you, have, when you have people like these guys coming up and sure. saying, this is what is really going on. Suddenly, everyone Ch wakes Ch up. Ch this was published Ch Ch by the Washington Post, Ch Ch the New York Times, Ch Ch and Ch the Guardian. Ch 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 Let's compare it say, to, yeah. to Watergate, for example. Yeah. There, in Watergate, very important what they found out there, and very important the way they exposed it. Yeah. At the centre of all this, you've got a man who's holed up in the Ecuadorian mm. embassy in London, Assange, who is a complete and utter egotist. Yes. This man is releasing everything with no concern about the consequences. I agree. When we talk about Watergate, completely different. I agree. And, you know, no one would knock what they did in Watergate. I agree. What I'm against is this man who is facing serious, serious no, allegations. He's facing serious, serious Yes, he is. No, well, go know. back then. Go back. If he's got nothing to worry you know, about, he is worried about he's being a sexual extradited offender. Well, well, he's scared to go John, back. There are, there are charges. We can extradite him from this country. John, no, no, easier. John just we need to clarify that he's so wanted on charges. Just, just for a second, it's important to clarify. Julian Assange is wanted on yes. charges of sexual assault. He's not been convicted of anything. No, and of course, he claims he, he that he feels it's back. part of a bigger um, potential extradition well, attempt yeah, he by the US from this country. Easier, it's a fact. That's why he's in the embassy. Don't mistake that. Someone, I, as someone who's half Swedish, may I say that I, I am absolutely sure that Sweden has no other agenda about extradition here. Sweden no. is concerned with it, people breaking its laws. Absolutely. And this is what it looks as though. I mean, we, we don't but, know. He, this is what the no, allegations are about. If we're going to discuss, are what about. are we discussing? The rape charges? In that well, case... we're talking you know, about whether... We're, we're talking, talking about, about heroes and villains. We're no talking about heroes and villains. Can you just question, specify, we're not discussing charges. I think the question we're asking is, is there a bigger... Perhaps conspiracy is the wrong word, but that authorities are perhaps trying to shut down information because they don't no. want anything out, including well, no. stuff which should be no. out. In terms oh. of in is there a concern about reckless um, yeah, I exposure think, of information? I think Julian Assange is undoubtedly utterly cavalier about yes. information, and he will put anything into the public arena. He believes right. if that all information is Investigative journalism is really important, and we don't want any of this to stop that happening, right? I actually believe in a free press. I actually believe what's happening with Leveson it means we're going to have less of a free press. We should be supporting a free press. However, this man is reckless. Right. And he's at the centre of all of these mm, things. And he's the man who's going to damage it. Of course we right. need to know Let's if our Julian government's Let's aside now, because I'd like to bring that. in people who've been involved yeah, sure. in the issue of, of leaking security information. Um, we're joined by Annie Machon on webcam. She's a former MI5 intelligence officer who left the service in 1996 with another 
operative David Shela to blow the whistle on alleged activities, including plot to kill Libyan leader Colonel Gaddafi and allegedly failings to stop an IRA bombing in London. Um, Annie Machon, you know, some people are saying, you know, you chose to sign the Official Secrets Act. With security, you should have honoured it. Mm. Well, I did sign the Official Secrets Act, sure. Um, my very first preliminary interview, uh, part of a 10-month recruitment process when I knew nothing of what the intelligence agencies were doing. And to my dying day, I will protect official secrets. What I felt compelled to help David Shearer expose, however, was a whole list of crimes and illegal acts being committed by the spies. And they could get away with it because there is no meaningful oversight in the UK in order to hold them to account. So I would argue that crimes committed by the spies are not official secrets, they are unofficial secrets. Could you what not have gone through an official channel? There's a proper channel where whistleblowers can go without, you know, without risking prosecution, where there can be a proper official investigation into allegations of wrongdoing. When you look at the cases of people like Edward Snowden um, and Bradley Manning, uh, Private Manning, do you feel that they had an alternative to what they did, or were they doing the right thing? Um, obviously, they felt they had no alternative, other, otherwise they would not have taken that risk. No whistleblower goes out um, on a whim to do what they do. They know what they face, potentially years, life in prison. Um, and they also know that they will lose their careers and all that goes with it. So it's a very difficult decision to do. However, if you see so much egregious activity that you feel you have to speak about, and bear in mind, most people join these services because they want to serve their country, they want to make a difference, they want potentially to save lives. If they feel that there's no other route to serve their country but to go public and take that risk, they will still Thank you. Stay, stay with us, um, um, Annie, because I'd like to bring in uh, Bob Ayres, who still works in the security business, was a cyber intelligence officer in the US Army uh, for 30 years. Thank you for joining us. You know, the argument, I have to follow orders, has not been acceptable since the Nuremberg trials at the end of the Second World War. If people believe something morally wrong is going on in the security operations, they have to report it, don't they? And that's what Private Manning believed. Well, you're, you're confusing two issues. One is morality, and the other is legality. Uh, if something is wrong in the military, it's an illegal order. If it's not moral, that doesn't necessarily make it illegal. For example, um, if you're uh, bombing a city center and you're killing civilians, is that moral? Absolutely not. But is it legal in time of war? Yes, it's legal. So we can't confuse the two. What we're talking been. about here in terms of whistleblowing is individuals substituting their belief in what's right or wrong for the society or the organization that they're a member of. And I believe that's wrong. But there have been cases of military whistleblowers making important disclosures in the past. Uh, the Pentagon Papers in, I think, 1971, which revealed um, some illegal activities around the Vietnam War, the, the My Lai Massacre, there was a conviction as a result of that. Are you saying that's always wrong? What you're arguing is the end justifies the means. And again, you can't decide whether something is right or wrong only after the fact. You have to be able to define in advance what's acceptable behavior. <laughs> and if you say when someone reveals secrets, for example, if the secrets they reveal turn out to be interesting, then it's acceptable. And if they turn out to be non-interesting or somebody dies as a result of it, it's unacceptable. In Manning's case, he released over half a million documents. He hadn't read them. He didn't know what was in them. He didn't know who he was putting at risk, what processes, procedures, operations, or government secrets he was compromising, but he did it anyway. Okay. And that's not for a moral reason, that's just for some sort of egotistical reason. All right, thanks. Stay with us, Bob. I'd like to bring in the panel. Uh, Tarek Ali first. Well, the pe pe Pentagon Papers were released by Daniel Ellsberg, a very s senior official in the State Department. He wasn't actually in the military. He took them straight to the New York Times, and after consideration, they published them. He was charged, uh, uh, but by and large, not very much was done to him. He traveled the United States, speaking in city after city against but the wall. Bob seems to be arguing The thing is, that what happens to people like Private Manning and others? They see something which they cannot tolerate or take. After all, they are serving in the army, or in the case of Snowden, working for the CIA. Where, when does the breaking point come? That's the question. Sure. Something happens and they, they, they say, okay, 
enough is enough, I can't take this anymore, I'm going to expose all this. With Manning, it was the, some of the massacres he witnessed. With Snowden, it was seeing his boss actually tell lies to the Senate committee about something senators were asking I think him. With Manning, we also have to point out that he was, he has admitted that he was in a very, very frail mental state at the yeah. time. He had profound issues with his sexuality. He's now asked to be uh, talked about as a, as, a, as a woman and his, you know, and to be called Chelsea and so on. So I don't think, I think a matter of conscience, I mean, we can all have, you know, twinges of conscience and all kinds of things, but I don't think mm -hmm. that's justification but to release is. half a million um, documents that you haven't read. And it comes back to what the guest said there, uh, the American Bob chap, is. the fact that Manning has just released everything, Snowden, everything, uh, Assange, everything. They couldn't possibly have read it. Just like you say, Tarek, you haven't read it all, I haven't read it all. They hadn't even read it all. Different in the Vietnamese case in, in 1971 and different with Watergate. You can begin to see some kind of justification. <coughs> you see something horrendous happening, you say this isn't right. Manning is just off on one. It's just egotistical. Well, and it all comes back to this man who's holed up in the embassy at the moment to Assange. It's all if you don't, about if you don't know who you're putting at risk and if you that's haven't wrong. even taken the trouble to find out who you're you're putting at risk. Quite hard to argue that that's a profoundly moral act. Yeah, that's a say. moral act, well, isn't it? You right. know, it's not a question of morality. It's a question, it a essentially, question of, of, of what they We're see. debating heroes and villains. What, what, they see, what they see as their consciences. They cannot accept it any longer. You don't know any more than anyone else whether it is a question of security. This is what yes. you've been told by All government right. sources and intelligence sources, and you accept it. Nonsense. I don't know whether it is a question of security or not. All right. We I haven't just, had the information. I just want to broaden it out a little, I'd like to bring in um, Gavin McFadgen, who's uh, from Whistleblowers UK, a support organisation in this country. We've been talking very much about security, but of course we have been hearing these whistleblowing cases in um, the NHS, you know, in a hospital, in companies. Is there a moral difference between whistleblowing in those kinds of organisations and in the military where we've heard concern about national security? I don't think there is any substantive difference. I think it's wrong to conflate security and blowing the whistle. It's usually, in almost all cases, an issue of embarrassment of officials caught out lying, breaking the law, murdering civilians. It's very often it's wrongdoing, hiding behind secrecy. Now, how has Britain's security been threatened? You might well ask that question, because in the Bradley Manning case, two security officials testified in the case, which I'm sure some of you may know, to say that no one had been hurt, let alone killed, by any of the information released by Manning or the WikiLeaks documents. Let me also correct something else. I was involved in the transmission of some of the materials we're talking about in the Iraq war logs onto Channel 4, and I can tell you that there were thousands and thousands of pages that were indeed redacted by whistleblowers, but by uh, Bradley Manning's people and all the rest of it. I mean, I think the idea that somehow people just dump this stuff out in some cavalier fashion is, is not, it's ridiculous right. uh, and nonsense. You've, you've raised it a really good... It actually betrays any meaningful comprehension of what actually went on. Thank you, Gavin. I think propaganda. the key word there used no was the idea that it's about embarrassment. No one for the authorities. Thank you so much, uh, Gavin McFadden. Uh, John first, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, there is a, an embarrassing factor there, isn't it? And then the whole point is that, you know, that um, some of uh, what our governments are getting up to is not palatable. We understand that. But, but what gives these people the right to suddenly put other people's lives at risk? Who elected Bradley Manning? Who elected Assange? Who allowed these people to get into this position and then be able to act as some sort of okay. moral arbiter for the rest of us. Well, I say he was no elected did. because he was a soldier. Yeah, so he should. He was he a soldier in the United Just States briefly, Army. What's your view on how this debate kind of has gone in a way? Because you know you've seen previous protests around this issue. A lot of people are saying this isn't about freedom of speech. No. Well, I think I in the case of that. Snowden, it is. He's showing that the s surveillance of virtually every citizen by the NSA and the GS GCHQ is taking place. I mean, what is this about if not the freedom of information? Thank you. And do I you think that'll be different in Russia, where okay. he's now hold up? Well, no. Well, but, you know, we, we won't go into that now. I'd like to bring in a few comments. I'd like to just... This go on, very briefly, Tarek. It was always made against the Stasi in Germany, which is why the German reaction has been very, very careful on this, saying, what do the Stasi do? They spy on everyone. Now it happens. Western governments, or particularly the United States and Britain, 
have the facilities to spy on everyone, and people are told, don't be scandalised. I mean, you know, the double standards are really grotesque. Well, this is a really difficult one, but I'm afraid we do have to leave it there. We will come back to comment, of course, at the end with the poll results. So thank you all very much indeed. The vote on this is very much open. The question, do whistleblowers risk our security? Remember, you can only vote once. If you think they do, text the word vote, followed by yes. If you think they don't, text vote, followed by no. Our text number is 81771. Texts will be charged at your stand message rate. You have around 20 minutes before the vote closes. A frank discussion. We have to end it there. Uh, your votes are in on the poll question we set at the beginning, which was, do whistleblowers risk our security? And here's what you told us. 47% of those of you who voted said yes, they did, and 53% said no. Um, very, very brief comments, please. Very interesting. Half and half. People are genuinely not sure that, you know, all this um, WikiLeaks, um, the Bradley Manning, um, the private Manning information has been necessarily for free Freedom and, and truth. Uh, Christina first. Well, it's, it's a very, very difficult issue. And I, and I, think, um, I, think, you ha I think it's very difficult to lump people together in that category as well, because I think each one you have to look at the individual case and what exactly they revealed. Right. Um, Chris. I have difficulty with it as well, because I don't think all the cases are comparable. And there is the diff issue of a redaction and as to whether somebody releases just a mass of information where it actually could lead to somebody losing their life. I have strong okay. issues with that. And briefly, Alison. I, I think, yes, I, I would say it's, uh, it's a treasonable thing uh, to, to drop your country in it, no matter whether people have read the documents or not. It's wrong. Thank you. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you to everyone who's taken part in today's discussions. They have been difficult ones. Um, also to all my guests in the studio, uh, to Christina Patterson, uh, to Chris Hudson, and to Alison Roth, to everyone who took part by webcam. Uh, thanks, and until uh, next Sunday, Goodbye.